Welcome to Please Excuse This Late Day Announcement. What? I'm the Prophet of Doom, and I'm here with Quaj <laughs> and uh, Silent Brina's people. Uh, we are today talking about uh, the cost of college, college, cost of college, and uh, the president is at U of M. Uh, Go Blue! A pretty good school. Very good uh, school. And he's going to be talking about how the cost of college has now far exceeded what middle class families can pay. I think you'll be thinking about that $80,000 note that U of M straps the neck of the good, hardworking people of Southeast Michigan. Gentlemen, as graduates, should U of M be indicted? I mean, should. Uh, <laughs> should, should, <laughs> should, be indicted. <laughs> should there be a change? Should more people be able to get a U of M education? Based on price, yeah. I think, I think price is prohibitive uh, for many of these institutions now. Um, with the rate of inflation being less than the rate of the, the cost increase for, for Ann Arbor and for all of these universities, it's, it's gotten to be absurd. But don't you think that at some level you pay for what you get? A U of M education costs a certain amount of money. If you have world-class professors, world-class facilities, there's a price tag that comes with that. Let's call it 25, 28 grand. And that in the same way that I can't drive a Bentley, I, you know, I, I don't have the money for that kind of product. Some people aren't going to have the kind of money for U of M's education. So is this false populism? False populism. Well, I mean, when I, whenever I would look at a situation like this, I mean, you want to understand where this is coming from. Why are prices continuing to go up? So... You know, and a lot of the reason why prices is continuing to go up is it's demand driven. You know, pe more and more people want to go to college and have to go to college for whatever reason. Um, and employers are increasingly, you know, in the last 40 years demanding that you have a college education. Um, so, you know, prices are going up so much because unlike, I, you know, this uniquely this product is growing in demand incredibly, much like healthcare, and that's another issue. But Let's talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> but there's all there's also two perspectives to look at. There's the individual perspective, you know, and as long as it's worth it to go to college, and it still is, you know, eighty thousand dollars, you're still going to make more more than that, more than you would if you'd only had a high school education, um, if you got your U of M degree. Well, let me just take a step back there. Okay. If you have a college degree, mm -hmm. you're going to make more than than necessarily you'd have made if you had a high school degree. But you don't have to have a U of M degree. No, that in is order, true. In that order is true. to, in or, and you don't have to have a twenty thousand dollar a year college experience in order to enter the ranks of those who make more than high school graduates. That's true. Are we talking about college in general or U of M in particular? Well, I'm interested because U of M is out of the price range of uh, a number of our families. We have right. kids who, when they get a chance, they will tear down, that's the word we were using, they will go down to a school that's paying the full price of their education rather than pay U of M twenty or even $19,000. But there are different opportunities also offered at, at the the more prestigious or publicly renowned universities being Ann Arbor, U Chicago, Harvard, you know, the, the price tag, as you said earlier, um, is what it is, but it also opens a lot of different doors, a lot more doors, a lot more contacts um, for the, those graduates to, to go through and try and find different, different types of employment. And uh, so there is something to be said for the type of institution you go to, um, but if... Are, are the kids making use of those resources? Like, are they actually sitting in the classes of the Nobel laureates, or are they just scanning the schedule and seeing, oh, yeah, I can get an A in this class, and it's probably taught by a teaching assistant who doesn't care? I, I think at the university level, they're taking the courses at the, the freshman, sophomore years that they're required to take, and then they're getting deeper into their majors, their junior and senior levels, where they are making some decisions based on the uh, renown of this, the prof. Uh, if, they're, if they are a super serious student who's looking for grad entry, graduate degrees, and, and whatnot, that's what they're doing. If they're looking to, to be done with their BA, maybe they're making some different choices. But don't you get the sense that part, uh, uh, Cabrini Breen, don't you get the sense that part of the, uh, the money that they're paying is for the new stadium and the athletic facilities and the sports teams and let's call it the, the Greek life and uh, uh, partying. Isn't that what the money's going for more than what happens in the classroom? 
Uh, no, for a couple of reasons. One is that, that that stuff is paid for out of, you know, donations and things like that. And actually, I mean, Uni University of Michigan's athletic department is one of the most profitable in the country, even though the football team hasn't been doing as well as we'd like. They're still one of the most wins. profitable. <laughs> okay, maybe this last year. Um, you play the but, Sisters of the Poor in the last game? <laughs> but, okay, let's just move on from this. All right. Um, but, I mean... You know, it's, it's impossible to look at it and say, oh, price increases paying for these specific budget items. I mean, prices are, they're going to charge the price that they can pay and still get the same amount of undergrads coming in. So, um, you know, and not too much political pressure as a public university. So they know they can, the people are still willing to go there for that, you know, 80000 you know, $80,000 thing you're hanging around their yeah, neck. Yeah, yes. And and thirty more than 30% of the students there are from out of state, meaning they're paying significantly more than $80,000 over the course of their college degree. As far as them making use of the resources that are there, um, and this is going to sound cynical, but I think, you know, a lot of the reason why you go to a place like U of M as opposed to somewhere else is that you build certain contacts. Um, for example, if you want to be, and I, I know a lot of people who are in this situation, if you want to go into business, if you want to go into finance, um, and you want to be on the East Coast making a lot of money, other Big Ten institutions aren't going to cut it. You've got to go to Michigan or potentially Northwestern. But if you go somewhere else, you're going to be in the Midwest area. So these are dues to join the club. Yeah. This is no longer about the intellectual life. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. So you're saying 80 grand is very little to pay to join the club of the 250000 and up. From an individual perspective, from the perspective of individual decision makers, that's an economic plus. But what about from the perspective of the state of Michigan where unemployment is uh, off the hook, as it were? Uh, what, what do we say then? Are we serving the public good with a public institution? So, exactly. so that's, that's the other perspective. There's the individual perspective where it makes sense to make that decision, and people are still doing it because it makes sense, but then there's the societal... There's the, uh, there's the social perspective, which is, you know, if we're, is it worth, are, when people go to these universities, are they really getting 80000 dollars of skills that will then, that society will then benefit from? I, I don't think so. Who should hold them accountable? I don't accountable? think so, not, at, not just at U of M, but I think I anywhere. Who should hold them accountable? So the, if there are state dollars going into a public institution and it serves the interest of select individuals trying to join the Millionaires Club, who should hold them accountable for no, that? We're, we're grossly sweeping over lots of things here and making <laughs> broad right. generalizations. That is true. That is true. Uh, there are probably literature majors Green, not making... Green Dog just talked about the, the economic side of the financial industry side, but then you look at the medical side, then you've got to look at the English uh, literature, science, and arts side. It's... It is a, a large institution that does open the door for multiple different... Um, All of those are revenue generating, right? Though, like, your hospital isn't operating at a loss. Didn't say it was. I'm just saying $80,000 worth of intellect or worth of job training, depending on your field, it, it could very well do that. If you're going into pre-med, it definitely does. You're not, you are getting $80,000 worth of pre-med to go on to... Uh, top-notch med school. Same with law. Same with, uh, even I would counter your argument. Even with econ in the financial world, you're going to get your undergrad degree at eighty thousand, and that eighty thousand is going to skill set get you where you need to be to go on and pursue that next grad degree, if that if that is your choice. Um, the the fact that it does go so great in in terms of the inflation, I think across the board, not just at, in Ann Arbor, but across the board is the, the true travesty. And I don't think Ann Arbor is the only one who suffers from this or, or is part of this. No question. Yeah, no question. Agreed. So why is the president at uh, Ann Arbor as opposed to because it's a liberal the school craft or <laughs> Henry Ford or the community colleges? That community colleges educate most of the students in the United States who go to college. Their likely path is through community college. Why isn't he speaking there as opposed to a four-year institution? Is it because of the prestige of the institution? U of M, you speak on those steps. You're following in the footsteps of presidents who've spoken there before. Absolutely. Um, is, that, is that what this is about? Yeah, excuse me. He's pulling, he's pulling from Kennedy and Ford and, and it, just this idea of that's where you go, that's where you speak. Um, you know, Lyndon Johnson spoke at Swarthmore. In 1964, just throwing it just out throwing there. It's worth more. Uh, speaking of elite schools and elitists, <laughs> uh, how... <laughs> 
How do we serve the public good? A private institution, they can do what they want. We turn out more teachers per capita than any can we other move small on from liberal this, I just want to throw that down. Our Quaker institution that uh, really helped to end the segregation and, uh, and, and was uh, a, a, a prime player in the abolition movement. Just want to throw that down. Uh, we were also part of the peace movement. Anyway. We got, we got Hillsdale over here. Yep. Uh, I hear you. We got Hillsdale. Um, so it's all, it's a political it's a political move, but it's also the most prestigious university in the state of Michigan. That a swing has, state that has the no. largest living alumni population in the world. All of them vote, except for Penn State. No, are we? I think we clipped Penn State. Living, <laughs> living. He living. Says. I don't I, think it makes I, a difference. <laughs> I think they have. Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, uh, I, I heard, this biggest... is what I heard. This is what I heard. We've okay. got iPads. Okay. Let's Google it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, there. It's not that nobody's getting the the good, like good skills that are that are useful. Because I also know a lot, a lot of people who are getting useful skills, and they know significantly more when they come out than they. So it's not every student that's right. like this. But I think there are a lot of students who it makes individual sense for them to pay. Because it's really, it's paying $80,000 for a ticket that says, yes, I, you are capable of, you know, you're intelligent and you're hardworking enough to do this, but thank it's you, not a certificate that says. <laughs> Mr. Dold is in the house for this podcast. Mr. Dold, do you think that Wayne State education <laughs> is equivalent to a U of M education? Uh, so, in, so inflammatory. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, wow. So why should one cost more than the other? Because uh, U of M, you get to live on this island where you never meet anyone different than you. Uh, everyone's rich. Um, at Wayne State, you meet all walks of life. And, yeah. and therefore, you are with the people. I, I, well, I, hope well the, I hope the listeners see the sarcasm or hear the sarcasm. Where's my paper at? <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break. Uh, <laughs> 